In this problem, a horizontal cylindrical vessel of length 2L is separated by a thin insulated piston into two equal parts, each of which contains n moles of an ideal monatomic gas at a temperature T. The piston is connected to the end faces of the vessel by undeformed springs of rigidity or spring constant K each. When an amount of heat Q is supplied to the gas in the right part, the piston is displaced by a distance x is equal to L by 2. Determine the amount of heat Q dis given away at the temperature T to a thermostat. Thermostat is something which maintains the constant pressure. So for thermostat we can write it maintains the constant pressure constant temperature so that means in this left chamber the pressure the temperature will be a constant equal to t thermostat with which the gas in left part is in thermal contact all the time so it means maintains the constant temperature that means for left part t is equal to constant that means it is isothermal process for left part now initially it is given that the springs are in natural length so from equilibrium of this piston both the pressure the pressure on both the sides should be equal since temperature number of moles volume is also equal on both the side pressure is also equal on both the sides so initially there is equilibrium pressure on both the sides will be equal springs are not exerting any force let us assume that initially pressure on both the sides are equal to p naught i am assuming the area of this piston is equal to a so volume here is a into l and this volume is also a into l we can write the pressure p naught as this p is equal to n rt by v it will be n rt divided by the volume is a into l so this is the initial pressure which is both on which is same on both the sides now as heat is given in this section so gas will try to expand and on expansion they will push this piston towards left it is given that it moves towards left by a distance total distance l by 2 so let us draw another diagram for the final equilibrium position suppose piston is somewhere here it has moved by a distance equal to l by 2 and in this situation pressure on both the sides will become different now it is p1 it is p2 it is given that the temperature here is constant that is t and temperature here suppose it becomes t2 number of moles uh, will remain as it is volume we can also calculate since this length has become 3l by 2 so this volume is v is equal to 3 l by 2 and this volume will now become this length is l by 2 so volume is a l by 2 so we can see that initially volume is a l now volume is a l by 2 so the volume becomes half if volume becomes half from isothermal process the pressure will become double so p1 is equal to twice p0 as volume becomes half for isothermal process Now we know the value of P1 and it is twice P0 and twice P0 is 2 nRT divided by L. So this is the pressure. Now ultimately we have to find what is the heat given away by this section to the thermostat. Since this piston is pushing the gases and temperature of the gas will tend to increase. So to remain for temperature to be constant the gas should give away the heat such that the temperature will, uh, will remain a constant suppose heat given away is q dash so ultimately we have to find this q dash 
the value of this Q dash. <coughs> we can apply first law thermodynamics for left part. First law of thermodynamics for left part. Heat given away is Q dash. <coughs> this is equal to delta U plus work done by the gas W1. Since temperature is constant, so this term will become zero. So Q dash is equal to W1. From sign convention, since this gas is compressed, on compression the work done will be negative and heat is also negative since it is going out of this system. So both are both of these values are negative. But further just I will carry forward the magnitudes of these values. So W1 will further represent the magnitude of work done by the gas in left part and Q as the magnitude of the heat taken away from the system of the left part. So further in the process I will just take the magnitudes of Q dash and W1. Now for the calculation of Q dash, if you find W1 then Q dash is also known and W1 is uh, somehow related with work done by the gas in this chamber and the springs, potential energy of springs. So this W1 must be related with W2 and potential energy of springs. So further our focus should be to relate W1 by this W2 and potential energy of springs and we should also know that what is W2 and what is potential energy of the springs. Potential energy stored in the springs can be easily written potential energy of springs since uh, extension this spring is L by 2 compression this spring is L by 2 so both the spring will have the same half k x square where x is L by 2 square and multiplied with 2 for both the springs so it will be k L square by 4 so this is the total potential energy stored in this spring and this potential energy will come as work done by the gases if you draw the free word diagram of this piston so piston on this piston the forces are like this from here it is p2 multiplied by a from here it is p1 multiplied by a and forces due to springs it is kl by 2 it is due to compression it is in this direction kl by 2 we can see that <coughs> the gases in this chamber pushes this piston like this and due to this pressure this is extended and this is compressed and gases from here are doing some negative work they are not uh, storing the potential energy in the spring because it is extended it is compressed so this is doing that work so potential energy of the spring is due to the network produced by these gases. So this should be equal to net work by the gases. And this network we can write like this <coughs> W1 minus W2. W2 sorry it is W2 minus W1. As I have already said that W1 I am taking just as magnitude. So for potential energy of springs, this is storing, this is this is doing some positive work and this is majorly responsible for potential energy of springs and it is pushing the piston back. So I am putting a negative sign. So net work done by the gases is W2 minus W1 and this would be equal to KL square by 4. Now one thing we have done till now, we have related all these works and potential energy of the spring. But still, for the calculation of W1, we should know the value of W2. So our next focus will be on this part, the work done by the gas in the 
right chamber now let us uh, do this problem on the next sheet so our next focus is on w2 we have to find the work done by the gas in the right chamber for this we don't have any direct formula because if you look for the process ki what kind of process occurring in this right chamber so it is not matching with any standard process it is not adiabatic since it is given it is not uh, isobaric since pressure is changing it is not isochoric since volume is changing it is not isothermal since temperature is also changing so we cannot apply any direct formula for calculation of work done in this chamber so we should use the first law of thermodynamics to find this value of w2 so first law of thermodynamics for the calculation of w2 and this is heat given q is equal to delta u plus w2 so in this uh, expression this uh, q is known to us w2 we have to find and this delta u for delta u we can write n cv delta t and it is given that the gas is monatomic since this is monatomic gas this value of cv is known to us now this is n cv is 3 r by 2 delta t so one thing we should know is delta t the change in temperature and this change in temperature can be calculated initially temperature is known and finally we know the volume finally we know the pressure also pressure we can also find like this since this is piston in equilibrium so final pressure if it is p2 it is p2a this force is p1a and from here the force is kl by 2 it is again kl by 2 so from equilibrium of this piston we know the value of p2 p2 is equal to we can find it like this p1 plus kl by a this two will add it up and the net force due to spring is kl so p2 is equal to p1 plus kl by a so since pressure volume both are known temperature final can be known final temperature in the right chamber t2 this is equal to p2 v2 divided by nr and we can put the values this p2 we can put as p1 plus kl by a and uh, this v2 we can put like this this is 3l by 2 now on multiplication and putting the values p1 we can put it like this it is twice p0 and p0 we know so putting all these values this t2 will come out as it is 3t plus 3 by 2 kl square divided by n into r it is obvious that t2 is more than t it is 3t plus something so t2 is definitely more than t it is more than 3 times of t so now coming back to our original problem now delta u we can find easily that is n 3r by 2 t delta t is t2 minus t we can put the value of uh, t2 here and we can find the value of delta u and now we can put the value of delta u we can find the value of w2 so w2 is q minus delta u so both the things are known now ultimately we have to find the value of w1 and which is ultimately equal to q dash so w2 minus w1 was equal to kl square by 4 so from here w1 can be written as w2 minus kl square by 4 and this w1 is also equal to q dash so put the value of w2 in this expression and finally this q dash will be known to us and final answer for this problem will be q minus 3 nrt 
minus 5 by 2 kl square. So this is the final answer to this problem.